talked about this for those of you that were here last year, is this uh, advent of digital business. And to simply state it, digital business is about a different kind of design of business uh, using the blending of digital and physical, so uh, virtual and physical. There are a lot of your readers, uh, there are a lot of people around the world that say, well, isn't this the same thing as we have done with e-business or e-government? Uh, and the answer to that is no, it is not. And there's a fundamental difference in this, which is uh, that what, what we are doing now is we're blending not two things, but three things. We're blending the integration of people and business, which is what we have done the last 15 years. Uh, this created Googles and Amazons and other large companies around the globe with valuations that rival uh, companies that have existed for 100 years. Now you add physical things to this, uh, and what you get is a completely different approach to using technology that will create, over the next 10 to 15 years, companies similar to Google and Amazon that we don't know about today. Um, some of them will come, in fact, from traditional industrial areas, simply because you are connecting now what is a platform which is far larger than we have had uh, in the past. Upon that platform, we have data that gets generated from every one of the uh, exponentially growing number of devices that exist on that platform. And I'm not just talking compute devices, I'm talking physical objects. All that data is what we have said is the oil of the 21st century. But on top of that oil, we are creating what I would say is the new economy. And the new economy on top of that oil of data is essentially things that are algorithms, artificial intelligence built into software, augmented decision capabilities, and an API set that differentiate companies. And the world of the future is essentially an algorithm economy. And differentiation in that world is about who owns algorithms or ecosystem of algorithms. And we have learned that that is what has differentiated people in the previous 15 years. Because what really differentiates Google is not that it captures an enormous amount of data. It is the Google algorithms that allow them to present that data. So the value of Google is really defined around the algorithm. But the value of every company around the globe will therefore ultimately be defined by its algorithms, its artificial intelligence software code, its augmented decision capabilities in software, and the APIs that link you to the customer. That is what defines corporate value the next 15 years. And we have so far been heavily focused on quote unquote big data. But big data is dumb. If I can't do anything with the data, it doesn't matter how much of it I own, it doesn't matter how big it is. The differentiation is in the algorithm. And the fact that I'm adding things to this is really what digital business is about. Even if I am an information-centric business. So if we depict it as a, an evolution over 40 years, what you have is... Uh, Sonny, how do I get this in presentation mode here? There we go. So we get really three stages, is um, you get the stage which we've been focused on now, which created the oracles and the SAPs of the world. You then get a stage which is sort of the web 
So this is pre-web, this is what we've called e-business, which at the very end of this phase, the last four years, everybody has been talking about digital marketing. Fantastic, but only one example of the fact that every business function, as we said this morning, is becoming a technology startup. Because digital marketing showed us that marketing understood first the data was strategic to them, but what was most strategic was the software that allowed them to analyze that data, the algorithms. Now that's happening in HR, in logistics, in sales, eventually in finance, is that each business function will start to do their own thing, often in collaboration with central IT. And the differentiating point is not that they don't want to use what IT does. Their starting point is, they say, um, I need to analyze this, so I need a tool. I'll go out and buy a tool because I can do that very cheaply. I need more data, so I'll go out and buy some data that may be available from a cloud-based solution provider. I then need a new piece of software, and what's happening in HR now is there's an explosion of HR software solutions that are cloud-based that frankly rival what most companies in the GCC have as established HR systems from Oracle and SAP. That will happen everywhere else. But then we get into this world, which as I said, evolves around technologies that then extend, and that was what we talked about this morning, in terms of the change that's happening. And so you will be able to, uh, throughout this, uh, this week, to go to the top 10 technology session that will then say, well, how do I operationalize this? What are the technologies that are available today? Because this is not about a set of future technologies. This is a set of technologies available today. And you divide it into three sections. Technology that extends your infrastructure platform, way beyond what we have now with things like sensors, the compute technology, 3D printing, uh, robots, uh, drones, everything that extends the compute infrastructure, right? And you could speak of the creation of mesh networks, networks that compete and uh, communicate with each other. I mean, the main aspect in drone technology is not the ones that we see people buy themselves, these large disks. Where drone is today is the drones are this large. And they do analysis and they communicate with other drones of the same size. And you can basically create a flying network that could do analysis of something that you need in an organization.